um, uh, this is a project that uh, originated in uh, uh, exploration of mathematics outside the standard mathematical curriculum. The idea was to um, learn a bit about uh, structuring and composing proofs. And then uh, the next idea was to teach a computer how to do the same thing, uh, because uh, the computer sometimes might help us to, to do it quicker. Uh, in fact, the field of um, uh, proof assistance uh, is very popular uh, around the world. There are many different ways uh, one can teach a computer how to do proofs. And this is one that we developed here uh, together with uh, students at Stellenbosch University. It's called SOFIA. Um, what you see on the screen is uh, a GitHub uh, uh, repository for uh, the Python version of Sophia, which I will be presenting to you today. It consists of uh, the main uh, Python file, sophia.py. Uh, at this point, you should already know how to um, uh, download a Python file and, and, and integrate it into your Python, Python uh, system. And then uh, I hope you also know how to import it in another file where you can uh, run some code. So basically, Sophia.py is the entire software. And what we're going to be doing now is looking, going through some of the examples that's uh, also presented um, on the same GitHub page, uh, examples.txt. So what I've done now, for simplicity's sake, I've, um, I've found a nice uh, online Python compiler that you see right here. And um, uh, we're going to be uh, writing the Python code um, on this compiler. So I've also created a separate uh, file, sophia.py, which is nothing other than a copy of uh, the file that you can find on GitHub. And um, now I've also created a new file. Let's call it uh, lesson one. And let's begin building a mathematical proof. Uh, so the nice thing about Sophia is that, uh, unlike many other uh, proof assistant softwares around the world, where you have to first learn, especially the popular ones, you have to first learn many pages of the documentation before you can get started. In Sophia, you can get started almost immediately. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, there is a, a course that I presented on this. Um, the same similar uh, summer school last year. And the material from that course can be found on my um, blog. Um, I'm showing it to you now on the screen. So if you will be interested in this after uh, the talk, uh, you can go on that uh, website and you can learn a bit more about Sophia there. The first uh, theorem that we will create um, is called um, will be reflexivity of equality. So we will, we will prove that everything is equal to itself is a, is a very basic uh, fact, of course, um, but it's also a very useful one in mathematics. You might not explicitly see how useful it is because you're using it so many times that it's, it's become uh, part of the habit and you, you never think that you're actually using that. The way to begin building uh, a proof is to first uh, build a proposition. So I write here t equals, and then uh, sophia.prop. And this creates sophia.prop is a command uh, in the Sophia module that creates a proposition. And the name of this proposition is, uh, as you see here, reflexivity of equality. And then when we run this, on the output side, you see that nothing happens except that we already have, um, I mean, something does happen. I was expecting nothing would happen, uh, but I was mistaken. Uh, we have a theorem already. Uh, it says theorem, as you see, and then the name of the theorem. However, it does say underneath empty theorem. Uh, so because so far we've just given a name to the theorem, we haven't even stated the theorem or stated its proof. In Sophia, the theorem will be stated for you by uh, Sophia. 
you build the proof and then based on your proof, Sophia will decide what is the theorem that you prove. Okay, now let's look at the next step. What we do in this line is, so now that we've created this object T, which is uh, a Sophia proposition, we want to start building a proof for reflexivity of equality. And this is the first step in the proof where we make an assumption that we are given an object called X. So A there st stands for a proof step of assuming something. And the thing that we are assuming goes in the brackets. And so in this case, we're assuming that we are given object X. Let's run this. So something changed, something is, is different now on the output side. We now still have theorem called reflexivity of equality. Um, the statement of the theorem looks still blank. It's just open and, and closed, closing bracket. Uh, in Sophia, uh, something like this uh, simply means truth. Uh, so you can think of it as some kind of universal statement, which is always going to be true. But of course, there is no use of uh, stating as a theorem something that's always true. And the reason why um, Sophia did that for us is because um, Sophia is basically telling us, so far, you haven't really proved anything. So I'm just going to uh, put this uh, truth there, not to not to have anything that's that's false in the theorem. And that's the other thing. So you can never prove a false theorem using Sophia. Yeah because um, Sophia determines what you're proving. And if she decides that you not, you haven't really proved anything or if proof has a mistake, then she will simply tell you that you've proved truth, which is nothing much because truth is true anyway. Um, and then, okay, but our proof, even though we haven't proved anything yet, it still has a, a first step. So there is the proof line there that shows that there is some content in the proof. And then we see the first line of the proof uh, which is exactly the assumption that we've made, that X is an object. Uh, so the fact that we've assumed that X is an object um, is represented by this open bracket, uh, X closed bracket. And then we have the slash. And after that, we have uh, L1 colon assumption, which tells us that this is line one of the proof. L1 stands for line one. And then this is the description of the type of the line it is, namely that it's an assumption. Uh, by the way, maybe it's a bit too late to ask, but uh, can everyone see um, the font size is not too small, either in the input or the output? Could someone maybe confirm if you can, uh, from your side, you can see the font well? Great, thank you I very much. I see a couple of thumbs few... up. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, that's wonderful. So let's move on. Let's add a second line to the proof. Um, so this is um, a step of the proof, which tells you that uh, when you've got a certain object that you already uh, either have assumed or you've proved that it exists, you've, you've, you've got it in actual hat in your hands then you can conclude from, from this that that thing is equal to itself. Uh, so anything that exists must equal to itself and that's embedded as a step in the, uh, in the proof system. And so that's what we're doing here. Uh, we, we've got X and now we're going to use that proof step to conclude from existence of X, the fact that X equals X. Um, on the output side, we see that uh, there is a second line called L2, so that's line two, and then uh, self-equate from L1, one, this tells us which type of proof line it is. It tells us which logical rule we used to um, get to the second line. And so we use the rule of self-equate, which is kind of uh, self-explanatory what it means. Uh, and then it refers to line one because we applied this rule to the object in line one. Um, now in line one, we could have had other objects as well, not just X. Um, so uh, the, the way to distinguish them is to give a position number. And that's what one in brackets is that we've used the first object in line one. I mean, in this case, there is only one object, but if there were more than um, 
would have been useful to refer to it. Let me just give you an example of, let's say if I had a Y also, and X came second place. Um, and if I wanted in the second line, X equals X, then I would have indicated here instead of number one, I would have indicated number two, but actually I would have left this with number one and done something else. And to determine what I would have done, I go, go to the help file here, which I'll show you in a moment how to retrieve the, the help. Um, so I look up here um, the self equate rule, and so the second uh, number is going to be indicative of the position. So the first number is still one because it refers to line one, and the second number will be two. And now that I run this, uh, it applies the self equate rule, as you see, to the object X, which has second position in line one. So let's go back to what we had before because uh, we want to prove something specific. Uh, that we have in mind. There is one more line to be added to this proof. Let's see what that line does. So, um, so dot e calls the function of self equating, which we already have done, and now we have another function dot s, which calls uh, the rule of synapsis. It's a specific term to the Sophia proof builder, and what it, that is going to do is something quite interesting. So let's look at that. Um, even before we had that last line, uh, you would have noticed that there was something strange happening uh, on the left side here, a kind of vertical bracket uh, that has been opened uh, and it hasn't been closed. Uh, it continues on on the second line. But with insertion of that third uh, command, uh, t.s, that vertical bracket has been now closed. And the last line is no longer within the bracket. So what's going on here? Uh, when we open up a vertical bracket like this, uh, what that tells us is that we have introduced a new assumption in the proof. Um, now, if you want to prove uh, some universal true statement, um, you don't want to introduce any assumptions because if you do, then uh, your universal truth will be dependent on that assumption, right? Uh, but nevertheless, to prove uh, universal statements, sometimes you do, in the process of proof, sometimes you do introduce uh, assumptions, but then you have to make sure that you abandon them so that your final result does not depend on those assumptions. Abandoning is an assumption is exactly um, uh, the thing that's happening uh, at line three. Uh, and that uh, rule is called synapsis. So, in line one, we assumed that we are given object X. And then in line two, we concluded from it that an X must be equal to X. And now after we have carried out this procedure, we can now say that every time I'm given X, I will know that X equals X by these two steps, right? And the thing I just said, every time I'm given X, I will know X equals X is exactly the conclusion that is written here. So the column here um, is like a mathematical implication. If something, then something. So the way we read this last line is, if I'm given x, then x will equal x. So this could be any object x. Um, here in line one, x kind of obtained some fixed meaning. But in line three, x does not have fixed meaning anymore in line three x uh, is just a name for anything that we could have, could have picked. So no matter what x we pick, uh, after we pick that x, we will know that x equals x. And this statement is the statement of reflexivity of equality. It, it math, in symbolic language, it tells us that everything is equal to itself, where this everything is the x. So the way to encode using mathematical logic, this idea of something happening to everything is to say, if I'm given something, let's say, call it x, then that x will equal to itself. And as you see, uh, now finally, uh, Sophia has changed its mind about what the theorem states, because let me show you once again. Uh, before, uh, Sophia was telling us we didn't really prove anything um, except truth. 
But now with this last line, Sophia decided to put this uh, last uh, statement that we made here as a theorem we proved. So that's what Sophia will usually do. When the proof is correct, um, it will take the last line, then it, that line must be outside the, the vertical bracket. So all the assumptions by that time must have been abandoned. And then if that is so, then that line will be displayed here as a theorem that's, that's, that's been proved. Uh, it will be nice to have some questions before uh, we move on to uh, a next example of, um, of building a proof. So there was one uh, on what is Sophia, and then I just replied with the link to the um, where you, you explain uh, the Sophia proof assistant project, but maybe if Prof can answer briefly the question. Uh, the question is, what is Sophia? Yes. Um, well, uh, Sophia is a Python module. Uh, this, this Sophia we're discussing now is a Python module, uh, but you can also embed Sophia in other programming languages. At the moment, we're discussing its Python implementation. It's a Python module that allows you to build mathematical uh, proofs. Uh, it actually stands for synaptic first order with OF swapped around for, so that the name sounds nice, synaptic first order uh, intuitionistic assembler. Intuitionistic fir and first order refers to the type of logic that is at the basis of Sophia. And the term assembler refers to the fact that uh, you can really think of Sophia almost like an assembler language uh, for mathematics. If, if you know what assembler is in computer science. Uh, and the, 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 the S there uh, refers to the synapses, which is uh, one of the main uh, rules of um, reasoning uh, when you build a proof in, in Sophia. I hope uh, I answered that question uh, in a satisfactory way. Let me then move on to the next example. So uh, in the next example, I'm going to illustrate um, how do you deal with uh, identifying uh, mistakes in, in building a proof? So in this example, we are going to build uh, another proposition. Uh, it's going to be called a mistake. And as before, um, nothing is shown yet because so far we've just created the, the proposition object M, but it, it even gives us an error. So the, let me try this one more time. Um, okay, it gives me an error because I've introduced the object M, but I'm telling uh, Sophia to show me proposition T, but I've deleted T. T was the one I had before. So I need to change that T to M in order for us to see something. And uh, we're going to apply this synopsis rule straight away. And remember the synopsis rule, what it does, it it allows us to step out from an assumption block. Uh, so abandon all the assumptions we had. But in this proof, we haven't yet introduced any assumption. So stepping out from something that you, you haven't stepped in yet, there should be a mistake. Uh, and the way Sophia deals with that mistake is, is that she tells us that, well, I've proved that truth implies truth. So remember the, the column there is implication. If true, true is true, then true is true, which statement itself is of course true. So basically this is another way of Sophia telling us that we haven't really done anything. Um, but then in the description of applying the rule uh, in brackets, it, Sophia points to us void. And that's an indication that uh, it was actually impossible to carry out that specific step, proof step in this specific position. And to really see that uh, the, the problem that Sophia encountered in us carrying out that proof step, we can uh, call for this uh, help function, which is m dot show h. And now that I run this thing, uh, you will see that um, it tells me, so show h is, h stands here for history. So with show h, you can, uh, get a kind of a history of how you were, you were building up your proof. And in this case, uh, it tells us that 
we just did one step, step of synapsis, but then it gives us some error remarks, namely, as Sophia tells us that there was actually no input for synapsis at line one. So this is the way you can um, trace and understand the kind of errors you might have made in your proof. And then let's move to the next example. Uh, we had the, the rule of uh, reflexivity of equality. Now let's look at the rule of, uh, maybe to, be, to make it more interesting, let me jump to, to uh, transitivity of equality. So once again, we are creating a new Sophia proposition, T. Uh, we are calling it transitivity of equality. And our assumption is going to be the following. So let's try to read this uh, Sophia expression. We are given some object X. We are given some object Y. We are given some object Z. By the way, when I say given, it's equivalent to saying, assume that we have that thing. So it is assumption in other words. Now we're also given that X equals Y and we're given that Y equals Z. Um, why do we want to assume all of these things? Well, because the, the principle of transitivity, I mean, it's a principle about general relation. Um, let's, for, for another example's sake, let's look at the relation of uh, less or equal among numbers. If one number is less than or equal to the second number and the second number is less or equal to the third number, then the first one will be less or equal to the third one, right? And that principle is called transitivity. For the, for the equality relation, it means that if X is equal to Y, and y equals to z, then we should be able to conclude from this that x equals to z. But obviously, we cannot claim that x equals z universally. We can only claim it uh, in this case. We only want to claim it when x equals y and y equals z. And so we want to introduce first these things as assumptions in order for us to then conclude from these assumptions the fact that x equals z. Okay. Um, the next. Uh, line of the proof will be following. Now let's discuss what, what this is. So as we said before, this dot A is just introducing an assumption. Now we have another function dot RS. RS here stands for right substitution. Um, and then there are some parameters. So uh, before I go on, before I show you what this actually means, uh, do you think you can tell me um, how can we conclude that x equals z from the fact that x equals y and y equals z? What kind of substitution we can carry out to get x equals z? If you have an idea, uh, please share it uh, with us. If not, I'm going to tell you the answer. So I'll give you uh, five or, or seven seconds to, to think about this. Did anyone respond? Uh, no, I don't see anything in the chats or Slack. Oh, there is a response from France. He says, can we substitute? Oh, it's a question. <laughs> can we substitute y is equal to x? Yes, exactly. So because we know that x equals y and we know that y equals z, we could, in principle, take this y and replace it with the x that it's equal to. But if we do that, if we replace this y with the x that it's equal to, we will get x equals z, which is exactly what we wanted to get. And so that's what, what maybe we'll see now. Maybe uh, we'll do a slightly different substitution, but uh, um, this is similar to what we want to do now in the, in the second line. Um, so let's see what we did here. We applied right sub substitution, uh, and then there are two uh, parameters, right? Line one, one five, position five. So line one is this, and position five will be one, two, three, four, and five. Aha, so we actually did now the other substitution. This is the thing that we substituted in, and we substituted that thing in here, line one, position four. So we substituted y equals z in x equals y. But now 
did we replace y with z or, or did we replace z with y? Well, obviously here we don't have z to replace it with anything. So, so it, it's clear we replace y with z. And, and that's what right refers to. It says right substitution, meaning that if you take the equality, um, whatever stands on the right side of the equality, that variable will be the one that will be inserted in the other expression in the place of whatever is on the left side of the equality. In this case, it's y. So we, once again, we, we take this uh, object here because it's line one position five, and we're going to pick from there uh, z, uh, and then in the object I'm showing here, which is line one position four, we're going to replace the y that's there with the object of, that we picked, which is z. And of course, then the result will be uh, x equals z. Is the proof finished? Uh, well, according to Sophia, the proof isn't finished because according to Sophia, we haven't really proved anything. As you see, the theorem statement is just, uh, again, that em empty block. Uh, and if you've been listening very carefully, you will be able to tell me uh, which uh, rule should we apply now, what should the next line be in order that the proof will be finished. I'll give you uh, two more seconds for that. Did anyone respond? Not yet. So let me help help a little bit while they're they're responding. Uh, so. In line one, uh, we introduce an assumption, right? Uh, and that's shown by this opening vertical bracket. In line two, we are still under that assumption. Uh, when you want to prove a theorem, that, that the statement of the theorem should not be dependent on the, any assumptions. So we have to uh, step out from, from the assumptions before the theorem can be stated. And do you remember uh, what, what rule is that that allows us to abandon all the assumptions? So that's the one that we call synopsis, uh, first letter of Sophia. So we type this S and then run. And uh, we now see that Sophia has been able to generate the theorem and let's try to read what the theorem says. You see there is a column there. Once again, column is for uh, if then statements. So, but basically Sophia says, if this is true, everything on the left side of the column, then the thing on the right side of the column should also be true. Um, and we've proved that. And so what is the left side and what is the right side? So given object X, given object Y, given object Z, given the fact that X equals Y, given the fact that Y equals Z, Given all of these things, we can conclude that x equals z. So this entire thing is then uh, the symbolic way to represent the idea that uh, when you've got three things, if first equals the second, then the second equals the third, then the first must be equal to the third. And uh, that completes this example. There are more examples here, which you can explore on your own on GitHub. Uh, eventually, uh, things will become more and more interesting. For instance, if you've heard of Russell's paradox, its proof is, is given here. As you see, the, the proof is not, not very long. Uh, what I would like to do in the last few minutes uh, before uh, we end off is to tell you that um, uh, Sophia is it's, it's a bit of a, a promotion. Sophia is a very exciting uh, project and we have uh, uh, some students working on it. Uh, and, and one of the, uh, main contributors to, to this project is uh, Gregor Feierabend, who is at the moment here with me, and he will tell you uh, in just in a few words uh, what he himself uh, does in this project. Uh, but in general, I would like to invite anyone who is interested in this idea of um, uh, proving theorems using uh, uh, computer programming to make contact with us and, and join our uh, project. Please, Gregor. Hello, um, yeah, I'm Gregor, and I 
uh, I have been um, involved in um, in a long discussion process uh, leading to the um, to this current uh, Python implementation of Sophia. Uh, I have not been involved in um, developing this specific implementation of the program, but uh, I have implemented a different um, a different version in another programming language called Haskell, um, which um, um, which can also be found online. Um, I did that in the context of a, a research assistantship at the National Institute of Theoretical and Computational Sciences, NEETEX. Um, and you can find it um, on the homepage of NEETEX on the, under the Mathematical Structures Research Program. Um, and here on the right hand side, somewhere here, um, the Haskell implementation of Sophia uh, can be viewed online uh, on this website. Um, and uh, what is nice about it is uh, that it has this, um, this web interface, which um, has a, uh, which can be interacted with um, similarly to the uh, Python version. So if one types colon help, um, one can see um, different um, uh, the different commands that are available. So just um, as uh, in this, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> just like any proof that we did in the Python implementation, can we also uh, implement using these commands? If you uh, are interested in it, you can have a look at it. <laughs> have a good day for that. Great, that's it. So thank you very much for joining the session. Um, and uh, we are very, very much open to all the questions, even after the session. And as I said before, you're all invited to, to join us for the project if you're interested. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Prof. So there's uh, a question from Litsatsi. He says, how or where do we join the SOFIA project? Um, well, one way is to email me. <laughs> uh, another way is to actually go on the Mathematical Structures um, program webpage, and you can click here, which says apply here for a research assistantship opportunity on the SOFIA proof assistant project. You click there, and then you can fill your details there. Um, so that, that you can find, as we said earlier, on NITEX webpage under research, uh, and then click on Mathematical Structures, and then you'll be able to uh, to click there. If you want to email me, then my email address, I will type in the chat now, but maybe uh, you already have my email address. So it's zurab at sun.ac.za. Okay, and then there's another question from Franz. Uh, he says, how does Sophia compare with other proof assistants such as Lin? Well, compared to the other famous proof assistants, Sophia is just a little baby. <laughs> uh, the, the, the famous proof assistants such as Lean, many people already have worked on it. It's in a very advanced stage. Uh, Sophia is in a very uh, young stage. Uh, but uh, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we hope that one of the key advantages, let's say, of Sophia would be the simplicity of um, of the of the language, so that you don't have to learn a lot of syntax before you actually start uh, building proofs in Sophia. Uh, but uh, otherwise, we also are keen to learn from what others have done in in other uh, uh, packages to uh, to improve Sophia further, of course. I don't see any more questions on Slack or in the chat. Okay, uh, in the absence of further questions, let's thank uh, Prof. Surab again. And again, if you have more questions uh, about what he covered today, you can email him or go to his personal blog and find out more about um, Sophia and what it can do. So thank you very much, Prof. And have a thank good you day, very much. Heather.